Amen. So we got to be in a position we can hear from God. We can hear from God. And, um, and sometimes, guys, I'll just be honest with you, um, instead of using all of our time, energy, and effort on faith, a lot of times the church is using all their time, energy, and efforts on foolishness. On foolishness. Amen. Amen. And uh, that's what Paul told the Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. He said, who has bewitched you? Who's hypnotized you? Amen. What, who cast a spell on you? He said, how foolish can you be? Amen. Now that did you receive the spirit of God, the gifts of God, the power of God through the works of the law or by the preaching of faith? You see, that's what Paul was saying to him. He said, he said, this word foolish is Paul said, uh, it's, you don't have a mind. He said, can't you think? This is what Paul was saying to him. Oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? Who cast this spell on you? So this faith boils down to God speaking to us. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it's God speaking to us, and God can speak to us through, it, through the Bible. He can speak to us through that rhema word, speak to us through a prophetic word, through other people, through dreams, through visions. Many ways God speaks to us. But when we know it's God and we hear his word, we trust his word, and we act on his word. No matter what the circumstances are or what the circumstances may be. Okay? The circumstances may seem impossible, and the consequences may be scary, and they may be unknown. You might not know how it's going to turn out, but we obey God's word just the same. And we believe him to do what is right and what is best in our life. Praise God. In other words, trust him when you can't trace him. He's saying, trust me when you can't trace me. You see, and, and the more we do that, the more he builds faith in our lives. The more our faith grows and the stronger our faith becomes. You see that? Praise God. The stronger our faith becomes. Now, of course, we've been talking about foolishness, amen. And uh, I'll just give you this definition. It's lacking good sense of judgment, lack of foresight, uh, stupidity, irresponsible, folly, senseless, thoughtless, simple. Of course, God says in, uh, David says in Psalm 14 and 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Yeah. Now, of course, we don't always say that, but sometimes we tend to live that way as believers. Amen. This word presumption, faith, foolishness, or presumption, this word presumption is an idea or belief taken to be true or often used as the basis for other ideas, although it is not known for certain. And many weeks back, I gave you that example of evolution. Evolution. Remember that? Amen. Evolution, which is the belief, you know, God didn't create um, the, the heavens and the earth, but we somehow just evolved into what we have become today, okay? And I told you this is basically a theory. It is basically a theory. This word presumption is an attitude or belief dictated by probability or an act of presuming or accepting something as true without real fact of the matter. And this is what they teach our children uh, in school, okay? They teach them evolution. It's no facts, amen, but, but they teach this because if you believe this theory of evolution, guess what? That eliminates the need for God, okay? It eliminates the need for God. Uh, it's idols, amen. Everybody wants idols. They want to create a God, their own God, amen, and, and believe something other than what the Bible says. It's a guess. It's a hypothesis. It's an opinion. It's an assumption. And let me tell you something. When it comes to God, we don't have to guess. Amen. We don't have to guess, guys. We don't have to have a hypothesis. We don't have to have another opinion or an assumption. We have the truth of God's word. We have the truth of God's word. We don't have to assume anything. Amen. It's very plain, guys. And that's why we need to see between faith and foolishness. And God doesn't want us to uh, confuse the two. Okay? He don't want us to confuse the two. Now, last week, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to pick up where I left off last week, and I'll, I'll give you one more point today, okay, because this, is, this has really been good. The first one we told you was faithful food, and we talked about uh, the diet and the eating plan and all that, okay? And I pray everybody got that, amen? And the snack attack is open. Glory to God. So, so make sure you... <laughs> The second example we gave was about giving, sowing, tithing, alms, offerings versus uh, robbing God, hoarding, and stingy spirit and all that. And amen. And Dr. Jones did an excellent job on that this morning. Amen. He told us the benefits of obeying God. 
the benefits, amen, of being obedient to the word of God. Amen. God's a rewarder, guys, of those that diligently seek him. And last week we talked to you just momentarily before we close about faith or foolishness justified by works or by faith. And I'll tell you what, let, let's go to Galatians. Let's, let's look at Galatians chapter 3 because I didn't finish reading that. Let, let's go to verse, um, verse 8, okay? Let, let's, let's just go to Galatians chapter 3. Let's do that because, man, I'll tell you what. Man, Paul put it out there, glory to God, and uh, it, it really spoke to us. But, but this is, these, these are some of the most profound statements in the whole Bible. God wants us to understand this, okay? He wants us to understand this. Galatians chapter 3, and when you get it, say, I'm there. Amen. Oh, man, y'all moving fast today. Y'all ready to get out of church. Okay, Galatians chapter 3. But this, this is what Paul said. Now, let's, let's look at verse 1 again. He said, oh, foolish Galatians. O oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? You see that? <laughs> he said, who stole your mind? Who took over your mind? Amen. Who has bewitched you? Who cast a spell on you? Amen. He said, listen, uh, that, that, he said, who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whom I, Jesus Christ, was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. And I'll read verse 2 and then we'll skip down. This only I want to learn from you. And he asked him a question. He said, did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So Paul was having this, you know, having this discourse with them about, you know, um, you know, guys about Abraham. It got back into Abraham. If you look down to verse 9, I want to show you how it all ties in. And Paul was trying to, well, verse 7, amen, uh, Paul was trying to um, get them to understand that this is not by works of the flesh of what we can do, but it's by believing by faith. He wanted them to see this because these Judaizers wanted the, the new born again Christians to believe they had to keep the law. Well, if that's true, where's your lamb this morning? Where's your turtle dove? Man, you can't keep the law. It's impossible to keep. Praise God. That's why God gave us a new covenant. Because he knew, amen, it told you, amen, when you were in sin, it showed you sin, but it couldn't fix the sin problem. I said it couldn't fix it. That's why it's wrong for us to keep going around telling people about their sin if you're not going to fix the sin problem. God says, I've given you an avenue to fix it. Yeah. Amen. After you tell them about their sins, then set them free. Get them delivered. Amen. You got the power now. Instead of just saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Praise God. Well, you see, Jesus gave us something. See, man, we, let's, look what he said in verse 6. He says, he says uh, just as Abraham, he had to tell them, just as Abraham believed God and what? It was accounted or imputed to him. For righteousness. Amen. That's where your righteousness, that's how you come into right standing. When you begin to believe this Bible, when you begin to ingest this Bible, when you begin to stand on this Bible and trust God and believe God, he said, I'll impute that to you for righteousness. Amen. It's the only way, guys. Amen. The just must live by faith. Just must live by faith. He said this now. Then he went on to say this now. He said, so then, what verse am I on? Praise God. Okay. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you, all nations shall be blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Notice he said he preached the gospel to Abraham. Saying through you, all nations will be blessed. Paul had to remind the Jews, it just ain't about you no more. Hallelujah. We serve a God who loves the whole world and Jesus coming for the whole nation. He coming for all the nations. It's not just about the Jewish nations no more. Amen. It's for all nations, for all people, every tribe, tongue, and nation. God said, amen, I'm going to bless them. When they get a hold of this truth, said, I'll bless them, praise God. 
And not just the nations, he'll bless your house. He'll bless your household. He'll bless your, your, your business. He'll bless whatever it is you put your hands to, amen. When you get that truth tied up in there, God will bless it. He'll elevate it, amen. He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or even think. But he said, don't get it wrong. Now, you ain't, don't, don't think it's by your own strength and by your own might and by your own power. He said, no, that law stuff don't work here. Your good works and I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't do this and I pay tithe and I give all of I possess to the poor. Jesus said, you've neglected the weightier matters of the law. Where's your mercy, your judgment, your faith? Amen. Where's your works of faith? Amen. Amen. So listen at this, guys. So then he says this. He says this. He says, uh, I'm on verse 9. Praise God. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. I said those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Those who are of faith. And I'm going to tell you about Abraham. Abraham believed in hope when there was no hope. Hallelujah. Guys, he said when you believe, he said everything that God imputed on Abraham's life comes on your life. When you believe. He's the father of faith. And Paul had to take them back to that. Amen. He said, guys, this was before the law. You hadn't heard of no law. Amen. What law? Amen. God began this thing by faith. In Abraham, pulled them out of a heathen nation uh, from amongst his family and amongst his kindred, amen, and called him and sent him out. So you got to leave this place. Said, I'm going to cut covenant with you. And I'm going to do something amazing with you. Praise God. Go over to God. And verse 10 says, for as many as are under the works of the law are what? Under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. They are under the law. So when you get, go back under trying to do things in your own strength, in your own way, and, and, and earn all of this stuff, he said you go back under the curse. Deuteronomy 28. You go back under that sickness, poverty, death, disease, stress, struggle. All of, He said you go right back under the curse. But how many know Jesus Christ has delivered us from the curse of the law? You every curse over your life has been broken by the blood of Jesus. It's been broken by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, not only is it broken over your life, he said, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse those that curse you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And everything you put your hands to, he said, I'll bless it. I'll cause all the families to be blessed because of you. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for them two amens this morning. I don't know if y'all, <laughs> okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, glory to God. I receive it. Amen. See, that's the thing for faith to operate. You got to what? You got to receive it. You got to receive it. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. He says this, but, but that no man should, is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, Paul is telling them, for the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. He said, man, the law can't justify you. Amen. Turtle doves can't justify you. Lambs and bullocks, they can't justify you. He said the blood of animals is one thing, but let me tell you about the blood of Jesus. He said once and for all. You don't have to come back year after year repenting, amen, walking around with all this guilt, all this shame, all this sorrow, feeling like you under curse. He said, once you get the blood of Jesus on you, whom the sun set free, is free indeed. You ain't got to keep coming back. All you got to do is say, thank you, Lord. I've been set free. All you got to do is walk in what God has already done, receive it, Believe it, stand on it, and accept everything that's already been done for you. Because you are the righteousness of God. You have been justified. Saints, you've been acquitted this morning. You was found guilty, amen? But God said, you know what? Not guilty. Glory to God. He said, you've been acquitted. You're free to go. 
He said, you've been set free. Thank you, Father. Not by any righteousness we have done, that we have done, but he that knew no sin, he became sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He told him, he said, Galatians, y'all got to get this. He said, y'all got to get this now. I know it sounds too good to be true. He said, but you got to get this. What God has made available for you. And not only did he cleanse you from your sins, amen, he seated you together with him in heavenly places. Far above all principalities, all power, all dominion. Whether in heaven or in earth, he said, amen, I raise you up to sit with me. Glory to God. In heavenly places. You say, oh, you don't know my circumstances. Tell your neighbor, you far above it, though. Don't, don't you fool yourself. You start speaking to your circumstances and tell your circumstances, I'm far above that. I'm far above you. You ain't getting no control here. I'm not bowing to that. Amen. I'm not getting down and depressed over that. I've been seated far above. I'm way past that. I'm way past that. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Remember I said, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what it looks like, it does, listen, to God, it don't make no matter mind what's going on around you. He says, as long as, what, long as you got faith operating in you, he said, it don't matter what's going on around you, baby. You far above them circumstances. Hallelujah. 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 He said the just got to live by faith. I say you got to live by faith. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow, baby. Hallelujah. Our life is in his hands. Hallelujah. Already God. So you live by faith. And he said, guys, you got to get used to this. He said, you got to get used to this. Amen. And some folks try to earn everything, earn everybody's approval, earn everybody to like me. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to fast for 80 days and, and, and 16 nights. And uh, I got to do this for God approval. Oh, and once I get right with God, I'll come to church. They're always trying to earn something. Trying to earn something. You ain't got to get right to come to church. Church is, church is designed to get you right. You ain't going to never get right if you don't come. You got you to gotta, you gotta come here. You got to hear the word before you can do the word. Hallelujah. Come on, I don't see it, so ain't no use of me coming to church. No, see, that's a lie of the devil. Amen. John said, if you sin, you got an advocate with the Father. Hallelujah. Who's just and he's righteous to forgive us of all sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He said, you can get it right. You ain't got to give up. You ain't got to quit because you fell short. Glory to God. He said, I got a remedy for that too. Praise God. He said, by faith, you got to know, amen, that I'm a God that forgives. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, but yet the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Verse 13, one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible says this, Christ has redeemed us. I said, Christ has redeemed us. Hallelujah. That means he paid a ransom. He bought you. He brought you out. He came and got you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil had you. I mean, he had you locked up, tied up, and chained up. But Jesus paid the price. He went your bail. Glory to God. And he told the devil, you got to turn them loose. They don't belong to you no more. They got a legal right to be free. Open the door and let them go. Hallelujah. He said, you can't hold them. I done paid the bail. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said, you got to open that door and you got to turn them loose. They don't belong to you no more. Tell your neighbor, I don't belong to him no more. I don't belong to him no more. I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. 
I've been set free. I've been washed. I've been cleansed. I've been sanctified, set aside, poured out, bought back. I've been made the head and not the tail, baby. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. God, we've been redeemed. We've been redeemed. That's why we got to glorify God in our bodies and in our spirits because they belong to him. He paid the price. He paid the ransom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We've been set free, guys. He said, I redeemed them from that law. I redeemed them from it. He said, they don't have to do it because I did it. And everything I did, amen, I imputed it to them. I stood in the gap for them. I stood in the gap. And you know what? God's anger was satisfied. He said, you know what? Because of what Jesus did. You know what? All of that judgment that I had for us, all that judgment God had for us, he put it on Jesus. Jesus said, Father, put it on me. I'll carry it. I'll carry their sins. I'll carry their burdens. I'll carry their guilt, their sickness, their disease, their poverty, their shame, their hopelessness. He said, put it on me. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what God did. He put it on Jesus. Amen. And so the Holy Ghost is saying to you today, amen, you're free now. You're free now. You're free now. You're free. You can go. You can go. Court is over. Court is over. You can go. You can go. It's over. You can go. Your fine has been paid. <laughs> and you're free to go. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Guys, he redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And verse 14 says this, that the blessings of Abraham, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. See, we were Gentiles. That means we were a people without a God. But amen, but we got in on the blessing. We weren't originally chosen, but he grafted us in. Thank you, Father. He said that the blessings of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Through faith. And you say, what's the promise? What's the blessings of Abraham? Let me, let me, let me break it down to you very simple. The blessing of Abraham is sonship. The blessings of Abraham is daughtership. The blessings of Abraham is we have become sons and daughters of the Most High. Tell your neighbor, I am a child of God. Whether you like it or not, I, I've, been, I've been redeemed. I belong to him. Hallelujah. He bought me. He paid for me. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God who justified me. It is God who sanctified me. It is God who brought me out. It's God who set me free. It's God who brought my feet out of that miry clay. It's God that delivered me from them drugs, that alcohol, them men, them women. It's God that broke them chains off of our life. Hallelujah. That the blessings of Abraham might come on us. And it's on you this morning. Glory to God. I said the blessing, the blessing, the blessing is on your life. Hallelujah. The blessing of Abraham. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And Abraham began to walk with God, saints. Woo! You know what that means? That means the best is yet to come. Abraham then began to see the blessings until he was old. So the older you get, the more God going to manifest. The more he's going to manifest. 
Oh, it ain't over, baby. Glory to God. God got some stuff he gonna do for you. You ain't even thought about it. It ain't even crossed your mind. It haven't in it your mind. God said, you think it's good this year. You wait till next year and watch and see what I do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. By faith. We become the sons and the daughters of God. Every blessing he had on Abraham. Long life, it belongs to you. Come on now. Long life, it belongs to you. Hallelujah. The Bible says Abraham was very rich in cattle and silver and gold and servants. Guess what? Amen. Prosperity belongs to you. Talk to me now. It belongs to you. Was his family blessed? You better believe they was blessed. Hallelujah. He said, I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Family blessings, they are on your life. Say, my family is blessed. Come on. Decree it. I receive the blessing over my house. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The fourth thing was Abraham was called the friend of God. That means Abraham was spiritually connected to God. All was well with his body, with his soul, with his spirit, with his family, with his finances. Everything about his life, he was walking in the blessing plan of God. Hallelujah. Can y'all receive that this morning? Thank you, Lord. Come on, receive that blessing. We receive that blessing. We receive that blessing. We receive that blessing. I told them, okay. I love okay. For the okay. For the couple, tell me. For the back, I told them, okay, tell me. Hallelujah. It's an inheritance. Hallelujah. Be followers of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Amen. Let me tell you something about inheritance. You don't work for an inheritance. Somebody just leave it for you. Isn't that right? Amen. When they died, the lawyer called you in and said, guess what? Oh, grandma had some stuff. <laughs> oh, grandpa had some stuff. And they put you in the wheel and they left you this, 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 and this. Well, you didn't have to work for that. Amen. And God said them blessings of Abraham. He said, you, it ain't about working for it. He said, you inherited those blessings. They just yours. He said, it's been inherited. Amen. He's the Father, glory to God. And them blessings just roll on down, baby. They roll on down. Tell your neighbor, just stay in faith, glory to God. Start in faith, stay in faith, and finish in faith. Praise God. Come on and shout unto the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got something? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I tell you what, guys. I feel that open heaven in here this morning. Oh, say, hey, hey. I feel that open heaven over us this morning. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. You don't have to sit, guys. We're going to get ready to dismiss. I'm done. Thank you, Jesus.